Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back to the third game of course in the Project Gotham franchise to feature a car which, well, is not featured that often in many racing games. Because there are Koenigseggs in plenty of games, Forza for instance has plenty of them, Project Gotham does have a few, Test Drive Unlimited, various others as well, but not many of them feature the CCR, which is of course this car. And in some ways, the CCR is kind of the inspiration for the CCX, of course, to come after it. And as I've said before on the channel, I personally believe that the Koenigsegg CCX is kind of the Koenigsegg's equivalent of the Zonda F, where everything that the company is about and everything that they do well and their ultimate design style all fell into place. I would say that the CCX is still arguably the best Koenigsegg. It's not the fastest, but there's a big difference. The Zonda F is of course not the fastest Pagani, but I would also say that it's the best car they've ever made, in terms of the all-round package. Now this one of course was the predecessor to the CCX, very similar specs though, 806 horsepower from both, or thereabouts, even though the CCX tends to get a lot more credit for its performance, even though it's actually fairly similar. Both cars do around the high 240 region to about 250 in the case of the CCX, but if I recall correctly, the CCR is actually the first Koenigsegg to have international relevance because, and as I said, if I recall correctly, I think it was the fastest car in the world for a relatively short time. Although most people tend to, of course, remember the Veyron, which reset the record fairly soon after, and of course that overshadows it, but even without records, Koenigseggs are known for being these brutal, incredibly quick straight line machines, and what a success story as well, just like Pagani, and to some degree Spiker, although they are a revived mark rather than a new one, they managed to burst back onto the scene, but unlike many other brands who come back and then liquidate or fail again, they stuck around and they're still going strong. Koenigsegg and Pagani, they're making more cars than they ever have and faster cars than they ever have. And of course, speeds of the high 240 region are extremely quick, but they don't sound as quick now because even Koenigsegg's own Ajira RS, that's around a 280 mile per hour supercar. So the world of 240 miles per hour sounding good is an outdated one now. Although, let's be honest, it is still good. That's extremely quick. And it was the first car, on a production scale at least, to topple the McLaren F1, which was a big deal, even though many people don't realize that it did that. And although my personal favorite Koenigsegg is still the original, the CC8S, the slowest of them all, this one was a huge step up because that car has around 650 horsepower, this one over 800. Performance is fantastic, as I already said, the high 240 region, about 246, 247. 0 to 60, low 3 seconds, about 3.2. So typical hypercar kind of performance for its time. And fast enough to still be able to run against a surprising amount of supercars and hypercars even now. But the difference is the Koenigseggs have, especially in their earlier years, a much more TVR Speed 12 or SSC Ultimate Aero kind of approach, where they have raw power, raw torque, great aerodynamics, and rely on that first and foremost, whereas stuff like the McLaren, the Veyron, and a couple of others are more technical in their approach. They're more over-engineered rather than just brute power. Now, one of the things that I'll say about the two games that come to mind first that feature the CCR at all, because there actually aren't that many, Project Gotham 3, Test Drive Unlimited, maybe a couple of others, is that they treat the car with a lot of respect. Because games like Forza, for instance, who have pretty much always had a strong Koenigsegg contingency, be it at least the CC8S, the later games had more like the CCGT, the Ajira, etc, etc, various other games too, the thing that sets them apart from other cars, especially other supercars, is that they have brutal straight line performance, but they are very, very focused on professional drivers. They are not forgiving, they do not have any kind of beginner-friendly approach at all, and in some ways they're actually more difficult than you might expect, given that they've got around two to 400 horsepower less than something like a Venom GT or an Ultimate Aero. At least these did, the CCX, the CCR, and of course they're far more powerful now. But with PGR3 and Test Drive Unlimited in particular, they treat the car with a huge amount of respect, because it's actually not that difficult to drive. 
which of course means that when you couple that with the incredible straight line speed, especially top end speed on certain tracks, it makes it a formidable opponent. Especially when you factor in that the price tag is similar to what it was in real life. 470,000 credits is not ridiculously expensive, so for what kind of performance you get, that's great value, it's great bang for buck. Again, similar to the SSC Ultimate Aero. In terms of weight, well, Koenigseggs kind of have sort of a race car vibe to them, even though they've never actually raced the CCGT, which was technically a prototype, came close to it, but never actually raced. As I said, it was just a test version. But they all feel as raw and as brutal and as, in effect, simple as a race car, like an old school GT1 machine. They've got that huge power, big, loud engines, massive power, massive torque, massive straight line speed, and very few driver aids or things to help you, especially the early ones. Of course, around the Top Gear track, the CCX was notorious, ended up fitting a wing to the car, so before that they didn't even use wings on these cars, it was purely down to you. So if you are a purist when it comes to your supercars, and if, for instance, you are a fan of stuff like the Speed 12 from TVR, chances are you'll probably enjoy driving a Koenigsegg. It's just this ball of surprisingly lightweight power at only 1179 kilos, which could easily give TVR or Noble a run for their money, and with over 680 horsepower per tonne, it's quick. But not just in a straight line, which is how people tend to think of them, they are deceptively good around corners when you drive them correctly. They're not going to beat everything. There are plenty of supercars with less power that can beat them, but they are always a threat, especially if you put the time and effort in to learning how to use any Koenigsegg to its best potential. So it's definitely worth checking out in this game. Of course, wasn't featured in the next one. We had the CCX instead. But whatever Koenigsegg you go for, you get a pretty similar layout. They just get faster and faster as the years go on. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.